Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So if you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a ton. So in this video, I'm going to be continuing on the e-commerce app. I'm going to build some new features inside of here. It's going to be really exciting. I think I'm going to cover categories. So that's one big feature. Then we have Stripe Checkout and also a cart. So we'll do like a nav bar and a cart up at the top. Yeah, let's get right into this. This will be awesome. So the first thing that I want to build, oh, there's so many things to really build. Uh, it could either be categories because I want to add more items into our app. I was thinking I could go over to like Alibaba or AliExpress, any of those type of apps, and you could just look for anything. Let's do like iPhone case. This is really where it starts to be like more like an e-commerce app because we're selling products inside of here. And then, yeah. We could even look into like API connections with these apps too. But let's just start off like this phone case. How about this one right here? iPhone 15 Pro Max case. So I'll just grab that as like the title and let's go and create a new product. Okay, so if you remember from the last video, we added admins. So you have to be an admin to create a new product. If we try to go to like the product slash new page, it just wouldn't work. And if we go to admin, it's not gonna let us in either. But if we go to admin slash sign in, then we actually will see the admin sign in page. So this is how your admin would sign in, in on your site. Now I can't really remember, I think it was like admin at site.com and then the password. <laughs> what was the password? Like maybe admin one, two, three. Let's try it. Okay, it worked. All right, so now that we're signed in as an admin, we can actually go to slash admin and we'll see our little admin panel and we can click to create a new product, which is working very perfectly. So I'm gonna put the name, which is iPhone case. Let's try to find like a description. <laughs> I don't really see like a big description for this. There's a bunch of photos. Also like it really doesn't matter, right? The description. <laughs> I could probably just like copy this as the description. It's not even like it's necessary. Okay, and then the images, I'm gonna wanna get some images. Ooh, also, there is video, so we might wanna add video support. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and download some of these images, put it in my downloads. It's like, okay, all of this cool stuff, it's like a case. It's cool they already have like this stuff, the like the advertisement kind of pictures. But you can make your own too. There's a whole world of like drop shippers and people who actually do e-commerce for a business. It's kind of crazy. I tried to get into it before I'd started getting into coding and <clears throat> and there's just a lot to know. Alright. Wait, I thought I downloaded it into downloads, but now I don't see it. pictures ah. what the heck where did they go oh wait look oh they just for some reason like they're not letting me download it okay that's annoying they're trying to block my access so if i just inspect each image or how about we do use like the preview tab to kind of get the images so i can click one into the preview then try to like inspect figure out where the image is coming from. Well, this is kind of a pain in the butt. Image view. Because the question is, where is the image? It's probably like a background image kind of thing. Uh, but I just don't see it. Not nah, okay. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, right? To get that image. So we don't need that. I can literally just look up iPhone 15 case online. Or actually, it's probably better to use Amazon to get our images into our products. It's probably a better idea because then we could download the pictures too. So I'm going to go to Amazon. Switch over to English mode. 
And let's look up a phone case. I'll accept their things. Oh, by the way, everything's in Dutch because I'm currently in the Netherlands. That's kind of why I haven't been posting because I've been traveling. And it's also why I'm using Mac now because I don't have my PC. But I saw some guy in the comments said he liked the Mac videos, maybe because you use Mac, so it's kind of easier. And I appreciate that. I'm definitely going to do Mac videos for iOS apps because you need to use a Mac to build an iOS app. So that's kind of good to know. All right, this, I think I'm going to try to use this one, Spigeon. <laughs> I just want to download the images. So I'm going to do save as, put it in the downloads. Does it work? No, look, it like downloads the whole HTML thing. I just want the image. Come on. Why do they make it so tricky? So if we look at like what that element is, it's just like this huge thing. And there kind of is a URL in here. But it's like a pain in the butt to try to actually get it. I wonder if there's a Chrome extension for this. So I love finding Chrome extensions for little things like download Amazon photos. Look, image downloader from Amazon has three ratings. No more free, huh? And for free. Hopefully they don't try to like charge you for this. Just to download an image. Maybe I'll have to make my own. I've already been making Chrome extensions. Now it says open any product page and click on the button download images. What? Oh, the button that says download images. Okay. Let me reload. I don't see. Oh, <laughs> no, look, there's really a gigantic button. You can't miss that. Download images. I guess I want to download just the gallery. Hey, that works pretty good. Cool. The UI is like so like silly and like large. Kind of reminds me of a Roblox game. But now I'm going to go to the images. I'm going to go to my downloads. Finally, I can't believe it took so long just to get images. I have to get a whole Chrome extension for that. And how much do they charge for one of these phone cases? Hey, $13. It's not too bad. So $13.80 would be the price. And let's create our product. Boom. iPhone 15 Pro Max. Actually, this is kind of cool. It looks pretty good. So the best products. We have a t-shirt. We have an iPhone case. And this is where I kind of wanted to get like categories because it would be cool if we could organize into maybe like tech accessories, shirts, and like all these different things. <clears throat> And I'll probably configure the categories from the admin dashboard. Just the same as doing a new product. So I feel like this is going to work pretty well. Let's just go and create that new categories model. And actually, now that I think about it, we could do a scaffold for this to make it like less work. So we don't have to create the pages. We could just do a basic scaffold, just like the products form. This was generated from Rails. So we didn't have to do like much configuration. Just a little bit of styling updates to make it look like this way with a box around it. Another thing I'm noticing down at the bottom on the form, it says back to products. That would be kind of nice if it, if it also said like back to admin panel. So I might quickly add that just for like a feature for the admin. So let's go ahead and open the code. I've already been in this video for like a good bit of time and we haven't even opened the code, but let's open it up. I'm gonna open my e-commerce app. All right, and then inside of here, well, let's go to the products. Um, actually, we wanna do like edit and new maybe. So instead of back to products, it could be like back to admin and then just go to like admin path. I wanna see how that looks. Oh, and also, oh, interesting. I guess we're only showing the new page anyways. So on the new page, this is back to products. Let's change it to back to admin. And I'll set this as the admin path. Because only the admin would be able to be adding new products anyways. And that's kind of helpful to just go back. There we go. All right, so let's do categories now. So for categories, it would just be a simple model. So I'm gonna stop the server. Although you could just do this in a new tab if you wanted to. And then let's do our scaffold for the categories. So I'm gonna type Rails G scaffold and we're gonna create a categories model. Now I'm actually always like kind of, 
because Rails models are usually singular. So for something like this, like category, we might actually want to do a scaffold for category, right? Because you don't just say like scaffold posts, or maybe you do. I'm kind of caught up on this. Rails G scaffold category model, or could we say categories, but then it would just look kind of weird when you say like categories new or categories fine. I guess it's not. I'm stuck up on this. Okay, let's just do category. Also, am I spelling that? It looks kind of weird. No, that's right. Category. And then a category will have a name. Mm -hmm. Really? That might, maybe like a description. We could do a description, rich text, just in case you wanted to like add some description about the category. I don't know if that's important. We might even want to have an image for the category. So we do an image type attachment. So it's just going to be one singular image. And let's run the scaffold. Look at that. So this is all the stuff it generates. It creates the migration for the database, creates the model. It sets up the routes, creates a controller, like all of these different things. And then the views too, of course. So from here, I'm just going to migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. So just like that, so that the database is migrated and then we can restart the server with bin slash dev. And now let's go back to the admin panel. So where we don't see anything different right now, but if we change the URL to, well, now I don't even know what the URL is. Is it category or is it categories? I'm kind of curious. Let's do categories with IES. Look, it did. So Rails automatically knows the plural to add, to switch the Y for the IES in the English language. It's pretty sweet. So categories new. Categories edit. Oh, of course you need to pass in an ID. All right, this is really cool. So now the categories page, we might actually want to have this exposed to the users. Like that would make sense to search by category, but we probably would just want to like hide the new button, of course. Uh, we can just like do some styling changes. So first off, let's just go over to categories index and I want to do some styling here. So like this H1, it kind of has that same styling as our product scaffold, like exactly the same where we have the button on one side and the text on the other. So I might actually just remove this and then copy the title from the products index. So let's go back in here, products index page. And we have this H1, which had the font and everything. Let's just copy this and go and put it into our categories index right here it'll be centered and everything and then just change the text from the best products to all categories or something and if we reload boom now we have this text right in the center it is kind of hard to read but uh, we might address that in a second and then underneath we could list all of the categories which we already are but we might want to take like the same styling we could literally take this uh, what I want to do is I want to only take the class really and then just go and put it onto the ooh, the categories index so right here. Replace this the categories div with this styling for the grid calls because that will position our like elements into little boxes. All we have to do is change the styling inside, take some stuff away, and then inside of the category partial, we'd update this so that it's like. Well, basically you could match the partial for the product. Yeah, look, we can literally just take this code from the product partial and put it in the category partial and then just update it from product. So like what you can do in VS code, you can press, you can highlight one of the, like the text you want to replace and press control D a couple times and replace all of the spots. We could just say like link to category, DOM ID category. I was able to replace all of these really quick. Now, instead of images.first, it would just be category.image and then the condition if category.image.attached. So that's the change there. The category name is fine, but the price, there's no like really price. We could do price range, like, but let's handle that later because the price range. I think what we could do is we could take like the least expensive item to the most expensive item and then display it. But right now we don't have any 
like products associated categories. So we'll do that in a second. All right, so this is what our category partial looks like right now. But we can't even see it right now because we don't have any categories. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my first category by going to slash category slash new. And inside of here, I'm going to create a category. Oh, you'll also notice we don't have the styling on our text fields or the image. I kind of want that from the products page, how I made that like a little bit lighter. So if I go over to the products form, I'm just going to, I guess all we did is add BG gray 100. That's it. I can take that, go to the category form and just add in the BG gray 100 or yeah, 100 at the end. And we might as well just put it on each field. Maybe not the button. Reload. Boom. And now we have this light text, like or like a light text field that we can kind of see. And we could also put the box around the form like we did on the other page. So to do that, I can't remember where we added the styling. Was it on the new page? Yeah, it was. So we just added it right up here on the top. So we can do that too on our category new page. Just add basically just BG gray 200 with some opacity and then some padding. You know what? Some guy was asking me like, do have I thought about using reusable Tailwind components? And I have before, like in some of my earlier videos, I was making, like I was using view components to kind of put these different things into components, but I just haven't really felt the need to do it. I haven't done it in a minute. But I probably would. All right, let's create our category. So the first one would be like t-shirts. We just do a description, the best t-shirts around. And then we'll put our image, which would basically just could be a picture of a t-shirt. Uh, so we do have a picture of a t-shirt, drop that in, create our category. And this is what it looks like. If we go to all categories, this is kind of what it looks like t-shirts now already i don't really like this style because it's different than a product you know a category i would kind of expect it to be a little bit different like maybe i'll put the text really big and i'll put it on top of the image so to do that let's go to the category partial where we kind of had took that styling from the product partial put it into categories uh, and we can clean this up a little bit so what i'll do is on this div I'm going to add a class of relative. Now relative is cool because it scopes the styling so that you can actually have like an absolute element that goes on top of the image. So now for the P we can do absolute and it would automatically just put it like, well, I think we have to do top zero. Boom. And you see like it moves it right into the top here. So that looks pretty cool, but I want to center it. So to center it, I'm going to add styling onto the div, flex, dim center, justify center. Now it does position it, but what we have to do is remove the top zero and then the item center would be able to take effect. And you'll see that our text is perfectly centered inside the middle. And now I want to make it bigger and probably like stick out more from the image somehow. So I did 2XL, that's cool, maybe 3XL. We could do a font bold to make it like thicker text. And then how can we make it stick out from the background? That's a good question. So we could do, um, we could just have brightness 75 all the time. It looks like that kind of helped. So it's always kind of dark. And then maybe when you hover, it could get even darker. Brightness 50. That would be pretty dark. Yeah, that's not bad, right? But you might want to see like the image. I don't know. I mean, I think this is fine for now. We could think of another way to make, to help our text stand out from the background later. And then when you click on it, you go to the categories page which is cool, except for this is still like a partial. So I want to remove that. And also I want to hide these links unless you're admin, I guess. So to do that, let's go over to the category show page. Inside of here, 
we can just add like a little condition here if current admin only show that for admin view whoops uh, I, I guess you're not supposed to put the question mark if current admin which we do have an admin so it does show up all right and then i guess the styling is fine but render category let's just not do that rendering category because that's going to render the partial which we're using in our grid calls so it's kind of different anyways and let's just do our own thing here so on the category itself what i'll do is i'll go back to the index page and copy this h1 with all the styling and I'll put that right here in the show page. But instead of saying all categories, I'll say like the actual category that you're on. Just doing category.name. If we reload, this is what it looks like. We have like the name of it. And then underneath, we could put the image. Let's go ahead and do that. Image tag category.image. We could do if category.image.attached just to prevent any errors if you don't have an image for the category. All right, and when we reload, we'll see this image is huge. So we definitely wanna make this a little bit smaller. So I'll wrap parentheses around our image for the image tag. And then I'm just gonna add a class, give it a fixed height. Let's do height 80 with full object cover and see what that looks like. All right, so this is cool. I mean, I'm fine with that. We could do, whoops we could do a rounded large on it if we want it to be rounded and we could also display like our description that we had just in case you want to read about the category for whatever reason oh we could also put the title on top of the image but hmm, i don't know let me know if you think that would look good i feel like it would all right i'm just gonna do a div put the description so category dot description just like that. Boom, so now we can see this little description. I might wanna make that bigger. So give it a class x2xl. And eventually we should probably put like fonts on all of these little text pieces. So they're like cuter for our store and make more sense. Like also just the black text, now it looks so like ugly. So let's try doing a color. Need to go 100, it's gonna be really light. Maybe a little too light. Indigo 700. I mean, that's fine. Okay, but the next part would be listing all of the... Like, yeah, actually, I don't really like this design now I think about it. I want this image to be larger. It feels like there's no... Like, it's too small for a whole categories page, right? So that's... The reason why is because this top div has this, like, the width two-third. So let's just remove that and make it go width full. Right off the bat, that should, well, it didn't really do anything. Was I, was I editing the right page? I was. I guess it's the MX Auto. So let's remove MX Auto. Let's also remove this secondary div because we don't need it to be centered. That's what MX Auto does. It puts margin on both sides. All right, right away, this is, whoa, whoa what happened to our code? So the reason is because we had flex on the top div. So flex is going to make your items stack side by side. We want to do flex call. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's a little bit more what I wanted. So we have like the main image, then the text. And you know what? I do want to put the text on top of the image. So let's do that real quick. So how do you do that? Well, just like we did it for the little partial, we just add a div with class relative around the image. Like so, and then you take your text, you shove it inside the div as well, and you give it a class of absolute. And then on the div, you do flex item center, justify center. And boom, look, that looks pretty good to me. So we just have the text in the center. If we wanted to make it like more readable or whatever, we could try the brightness 75. Oh, make sure to put it only on the image because if you put it on the top level div, it'll affect both the text and the image, making them both darker. Which you might want, you might not. I'm only doing it on the image. So it makes like the image a little bit darker and then the text kind of pop out more. Our description needs some work. And also these buttons are just like horrendous now. 
So those are the admin buttons. We're gonna add like similar styling from the products show page. So let's go over there. I'll just copy this div that we wrapped those three links in. I'll bring it back. All it is is just like a flex justify center with some gap and some margin, but it'll make it look a little bit better. And then let's remove all the margin from these links just so it doesn't conflict with our styling here. And then take a look at what it looks like. Boom. Perfectly organized buttons at the bottom. And like I said, you only see it if you're an admin because we have this condition. So that's important. And then let's fix this description. So the best shirts around that could be, first of all, I would like it to be centered and I'll, I want it to be more readable. So we can add an MX auto onto this div and that should center it. Yep. But now I want it to be more readable. So let's try like a text indigo 200. So it's really light. Oh, it's too light. Let's try making it bigger. Let's do a font semi bold. Maybe we shouldn't do indigo. We should do like something else. But okay, I guess this is fine. The best shirts around. We could also add margin top four to push it down from the image. I mean, that's just, that's fine for now, right? We can worry about the UI later. The next thing I want to do is display all of the products that are for this certain category. So this is t-shirts. I want to show all of the t-shirts here. But the funny thing is the products, we need to actually associate them on the products. So we would probably do that in edit product. We would have a field for all of the categories and then you could select which category your product is supposed to be in. That's what we're going to do next. All right, show this product. All right, so to do this, we first have to add a field onto the product model, which would be like a category ID, which will allow us to associate a product to a category. Now we might want to think, do we want products to have multiple categories? I feel like for now we don't, we just want it to have one category. So like a shirt is only like a t-shirt category, right? Although eventually if you wanted more categories, like if you wanted multiple categories for one product, you would build this feature a little bit different because instead of having like a parent relationship where you belong to a category, instead you would have a has many, you would have a, what's it called? It's in Ruby, you do it has many through. So you have many of a certain model that connects the product to the category. So you'd build something, you'd make a model like a product category, and then that would associate a product to multiple categories by that model. So you'd have like a product would have many product categories. Now I'm just kind of brainstorming ways to solve this problem. If you wanted multiple categories, but really, I think we only want one category anyways. So it's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the console, do a new migration by typing rails G migration. We're going to say add category, add category to products and then category belongs to category colon belongs to like this. And that's all we need. It'll set up the migration for us. You'll see it did the migration. If we want to just cat that file, we can see what it looks like. Now, one thing we're going to want to handle is the, the null false. So you might want to have it so that you can have products without a category too. And to do that, we would need to set null to true because right now, if you run, if you migrate the database right now and you put this in, it would say that all products need to have a category ID or else it would just like break the app. But we don't want that. We want products to not have to have a category. So I'm going to edit this migration. We can do that by going back into our code going over to the DB folder and the migrate folder and just go to the most latest file. You'll see that we're adding the reference to the products model called category, and then just go and set null to true, which would allow this to work. And then we can migrate the database with rails DB migrate. All right, looks good. So the other places we want to edit in our app, to set up this association is going to be the models folder. We can come in here, go to the category model, and we can say a category has many products, just like this. And then the product 
is going to belong to belong to or is it belongs to belongs to category and then we can say optional true because again if you don't set optional true then it would say like it has to belong to the category so make sure to put optional true all right cool and also the controller categories controller or wait not categories controller products controller we can go down to the product params and let's allow a category id in the params so you can update the category on the product when you're editing it or creating a new one and the last place to change is going to be in the view where we actually add that category select box so let's head over to the app folder views products and then we're going to go to the underscore form file so this is the form for our products where we have all the fields and what we can do is just right at the bottom we can add in some new fields so what I like to do is I like to just copy another field so I can have the same styling. So I copy this and then I'll just edit it. So instead of the price as a label, it's going to be category. And instead of a text field, it would be a select thing. I forget, is it probably like select field? And then the name will be category. And then you have to put the options for the select. So there's actually a method called options for select in Ruby or in Rails, I mean options for select and they also have a way to do options from select from collection now let me just quickly look up this method and if you just look up this name like you'll find it right away on google it's pretty cool there's api doc and then there's also api ruby on rails and it'll show you how you can use it so you pass in like an array of arrays so we could do it this way or we can do there should be another method um, options from collection. I think that's what we're looking for. And what you do is you just pass in the collection and then you put like the value method and the text method. So like what it's going to display and then what the actual value is. So let's take that method, go back into the code, replace this options from collection for select what we'll do is we'll pass in category.all and then the value is going to be id and the text would just be the name of the category and yeah just like that it should work pretty nicely so let's go back to the products page and reload see if everything works cross your fingers ah undefined method select field that's where we went wrong i bet it's just select and like no field form.select let's reload and boom just like that we have our little select box and it does have the categories uh like the one that we created we don't have any more categories so quickly i might go and create another category just so we can make sure that they're all showing up so the other category could be like tech accessories best accessories or your tech devices and then for the image I'll just take like an image of one of these phone cases or like the charger. Sure. Let's create the category and then back over here on our products form. I just want to test if, Oh yeah, look at that. They're both there. Now uh, there's no option to choose like no category. So I think to do that, there's uh, there's something called like include blank. think you just do that on the select field so after all of this like right next to class we can just say include blank true i'm not sure if that's going to work let's see oh yep look at that so it starts off with none and then you can actually choose like what the category is so i like this setup but i don't like the styling why is it why is it not like the same as the other ones let's try to figure that out so Oh, I wonder if the class isn't applying. It looks like that's what's happening. For some reason, the select, if we look, uh, I can't even tell. So yeah, our class definitely isn't applying. So let me look at that method, form.selectRails, oh, right here. So the select, I just want to see what it's expecting. So you're supposed to give it like the options. Oh, and then you add the parameters inside of a hash like this. 
And the reason being, because there's options and there's also HTML options, right? Or no, options would be this. It's kind of tricky. But I guess you have to actually use like brackets around your options down here. And look, they even are using include blank for the example. So now when I reload, we still get the same styling. Weird. Because this is the select right here. I'd expect it to have like a bunch of classes, but for some reason it's not. What the heck, dude? Form.select. Yeah, I must be doing something wrong here. You're supposed to put in like the options and then uh, I'm confused. You put the, the object, which should already get set, the method, and then see, a nested collection. No, a flat collection. That's what I did. All right, I'm gonna have to look this up real quick. That's not showing up on um, select rails. So I'm missing something. It says the documentation for collection select. Oh. But that's from 2016. That's way outdated. Oh, this is annoying. I know it's like something so simple. It almost looks like I should do, I should try like not using the options for selects. Although I always do this, like I always do something like this, so I'm confused. So instead we could try like the collect thing. Category all dot collect. The name and the ID. So this work. <laughs> If this works, I'm just going to be like, what the heck? Why does it work? No, look, it still didn't work. The class is still not showing up. So I'm just going to put it back. You guys don't have to do that. I'm wondering, like, why? Why are we missing some sort of parameter inside of the form.select? Form select. I'm just so confused. But they don't have an example to like do it off of the form builder. It says notice that the third parameter, the options array, is the same kind of argument you pass to options for select. I don't even know what you're saying. As with other helpers, if we're using the select helper on a form builder scoped to the person object. Set the name of the foreign key. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> form build. I literally just want to see some more information about the form builder. You pass in the, the, the name, right? You pass in the options. Oh, and it looks like you don't even need like the brackets down there. Class. Oh, actually, I think I have an idea. Maybe there's options and HTML options are different. So you're supposed to pass in two brackets. First would be like include blank, and then second would be the class. But that's so stupid. That seems really stupid for me to have two brackets. It's just like confusing. Let's reload. And look at that. There's two brackets, of course. Because now the styling looks kind of normal. And if you look inspect, the select is getting those applied stylings. Well, there we go. At least we were able to figure this out together, guys. That's kind of annoying. I think I've stumbled into that before. But now let's test, can we update the category? So let's try to choose t-shirts as a category. Update the product right away. Oh, we get the problem with the images. 
That's silly. So on the product show page, we're getting an error because there was no image. So let's go to that show page, product show page, and let's quickly do a condition, probably just around this whole box or like inside of it. If product.images.any, but we're gonna have to address that problem with the images. Because every time you submit the form, all of your old images get wiped out, which is pretty annoying. All right, so let's try this again. Because it looks like it didn't even update the category. Update product. All right, so I can't tell. The way that we could tell is by going over to the categories page. Go to our t-shirts category. Oh, I guess we're not even listing all the... <laughs> I guess the best way to tell right now would be to go into console or LC and just do like product dot first dot category. Oh, I can already see the category ID is no. Uh, so let's check the console and see what the logs are for that host. It looks like unpermitted parameter category. Oh, cause we're expecting category ID. And on our products form, I just had said category. So actually we want to set it to category ID but for the label, I want it to just say category. So I'm gonna pass in the second option. That's just gonna be a string of category. And let's go back to that form. All right, here we go. So we have the category. I'm gonna set it to t-shirts, update the product. Let's go back in the console. I'm gonna do a reload, product first category, and boom, we get the category. So we have that working, that's awesome. Now, to display the, the products on the category page. It's very simple, actually, because what we can do, we can reuse the code from this index right here. Why not? Let's just reuse that code, bring it over to the category show page, drop it in right here. And then instead of saying at products.h2, we would say at category.products.h2. Pretty simple. And then for rendering products, we need to actually use like the explicit path. So we'll say product slash product, and then we'll pass in product as a variable here. This looks good to me. And if we just reload, boom, we get all the products. Although you can't really tell because we're missing the image for this product. So I want to quickly address that. Now, why do our images get overridden when you submit the form? Well, because when you select images, like they're getting passed through. So when you actually do have images on like the thing, let me quickly get some t-shirt images, pop it in. So now you have three files. If we were to inspect this field, we should see like some sort of information getting stored. I guess you can't really tell. It must be like hidden away inside of the input, but there is three images inside of here. So if we update the product, now, boom. Oh, another thing I just noticed is the category wasn't showing, even though we had the t-shirts category selected. In our form, it's not showing like the correct one. And when we just did that update, it actually probably wiped out the category, just like it did with the images. So if we check product.first category, now it's nil. Whoops. Now, if we wanna fix this, we have to go back to that product's form. And we have to add in a little option. We have to choose like the selected one. So options from collection for select. Let's look at that documentation. It says the selected one is the last one. So we need to pass in the current value, which would just be, uh, since we should have product, we just pass in the product dot category ID. And that's how we would sh show the selected one. Now, if I go back to the edit page, well, forget, did we, oh, we didn't update it. But if I was to update it, the only thing is it's also gonna remove the images, so I don't really want to do this. But what we can do is we can add a little check in the controller where you, we don't update the images unless we passed in new ones. So like if I were to drop in new images, I might like just be like fine with them replacing the old ones. Or we could build out a whole like image select feature like I did for the Airbnb video 
where you have all your images previewed for you and then you could delete the ones that you don't want. That's actually a really good idea that I should do, but I'm probably gonna do it in a second. For now, let's just do the check in the controller. So let's go into the controllers, products controller. All right, and then inside of mm, probably the update action is the only place that we really care. We're gonna take the product params and we're gonna just like basically do some filtering on it and then we'll pass in like new product params. And this will just be temporary, but what we're gonna do is we'll say um, like if product params, we'd wanna see like what it would come through as. So if you look inside of the console, it comes through as these params, then there's going to be product. And inside of there, there's an image images right here, which would be an array. So what we'll do is we'll say if product params product images dot um, we want to check like is there <laughs> is there any images right? We can just do all blank. That's one way to check because see, like this is an empty string. So that should be a way to check. So if it's all blank, then we're just going to set the new product params to product params. Um, actually, you want to say to unsafe hash, which sounds pretty bad. That's the only way that we can actually edit the params in the controller. So we'd say two unsafe hash, and then we could go and delete, just straight up say delete, maybe off the product images.delete, product.delete images. And then we could also put this outside. So only if it's blank, then we're going to delete the images from the params. And hopefully that would prevent the images from getting removed. Now let's see. Let's see if that code works. I'm going to click update product. Boom. It says undefined method brackets. Okay, so it looks like it wasn't able to find product in the params. Even though, oh, because I should have done the new product params. For a start. If new product params images. All right, well, let's try that again. Update product. No, we still get the same error. So I kind of want to do like a pry inside of here. So a debugger. Now I think in Rails they use bybug. I have no idea how to use bybug. But let's look it up. Built-in debugger for Rails, and we can learn how to do this together. Because I usually use binding cry. But I want to see like there's supposedly a new built-in one. Oh, I have to create an account. Forget it. So there's actually a debug. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Whoa, you can debug and then it'll put all of the attributes and just display it into the page. That's so cool. You can also say to YAML dot inspect. That's pretty cool. There's a lot to learn in Rails. Like there's so many little helpful little tricks. All right, and it looks like there's a debugger. <laughs> I'm gonna see, does that work with bin dev too? Let's see. Cause binding pride doesn't work with bin dev. That's like one drawback. Let's see, I'm gonna click update product. And we should have a debugger open now. It says debugger, wait for debugger connection. Wait, what the <laughs> Through this like weird socket file. I don't know what the heck. Maybe you run it in another, no. How the heck do you use debugger? There are many ways to insert and trigger a breakpoint in the debugger. Break. I'm so confused. But how do I use debugger? Like. to use debugger rails. So 
Some guy said, best way to debug is to use the debugger commands. If you're using, use the gem by bug. When you run, the server will stop when it reaches debugger. But it's like so old. Hmm. Okay. The funny thing is it says like waiting, wait for debugger connection, but <laughs> I'm so confused. What do I do with this? We have like a gem. Let me check in my gem file. Do I even have that gem? Debug? Oh, we do. And then it says, look at this. Oh, it actually gives us a helpful link. So let me see. Enter a debugging session. It'll start the debugging session. Okay. But I'm just confused. Like it's, it seems to not work with Vindev because because like what it's doing right now. I mean, I don't know how to use it. It's so confusing. Like why this looks pretty confusing to me. Okay, forget it. Forget it. Let's not use debugger. I didn't want to make this a big thing, but let's just add pry. So let's bundle add pry dash rails, which is for binding pry. Now the only difference is when we use it, we have to actually do like a Rails S instead of a bin dev. Because it really doesn't work well with bin dev. So let's just do Rails S and then inside of our code that we wanted to debug, we'll just do binding.pry. Then we can go ahead and try this again. Click update product and then we'll go back in the console and boom, we have a nice pry session, which is pretty comfortable for me. So Pry allows you to mess with your code exactly how it shows up. So we can check like our params. Oh, I see what's happening. So actually we're trying to net, we're trying to access like the products key, but we already have, we're already inside of that product key. So we don't need to check that. All we need to check is images. Can we just do all blank? Like I had initially wrote in and it says true. So yeah, that's what we'll check for. And then also let's make sure that we can delete the images like this. So we said like new product params dot delete images. Let's see what happens. Let's try to access the params. As you see, there's no images, which means when we update the model, it wouldn't affect the images. It would leave the ones there. So that's actually awesome. So let me exit out and then I'm going to update the code. So all we need to do is just remove this product section and it should work just as we expected i can also make this a one-liner so remove the end and now it's just two extra pieces of code up at the top and then we're passing in the new product params instead of the product params if that makes sense and this should fix that issue at least temporarily while we work on building the new ui so now i'm going to update the t-shirt with the category Finally, oh, <laughs> and blank. Oh, because I, I forgot the question mark on the blanks because blank is a question mark type of method. So update product. Boom, it actually worked. Our images are still there. Awesome. And we should also have the category if we go to localhost slash categories. Oh, let's go to t-shirts. Boom, we have our t-shirt there. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so the next thing I wanna quickly do is I wanna add the authorization to the categories because right now anybody can edit your categories. If we go to new incognito menu, you'll see that our page is not secure. We're able to edit a category. We're able to create new categories. So hackers would go crazy for this. So we wanna lock that down and it's very simple, just like the products controller. Actually, what we can do is let's just take the same code, check admin priv except index show let's copy that from products controller and just drop it right in the categories controller just like that boom and now our page is secure and locked down so if i was going to go to incognito now and try to access the edit page you'll see what happens is we just get redirected to the home page 
So no way, dude. You're not updating the category. You're not allowed. <laughs> Try to create a new category. It's like, nope. But if I was just to go to categories to view like the categories, I'm able to see it just like this. I can go view the different ones. This is sweet. All right, so now that's pretty good. We have categories, this is awesome. From here, there's some more like additions that we can do. First of all, on the on this main page, we might wanna have like a link like uh, shot by category and that would just bring you to the categories page. So let's go ahead and add that onto the products index. Underneath where we're rendering products, I think we'd wanna do it underneath. You just do like a link to shop by category and then that'll just bring you to the categories path and i feel like this would be kind of like a big kind of box at the bottom rounded large height 64 with full eg grade 200 text to excel font bolds i know i'm going crazy here but i'm just trying to style it a little bit maybe semi bold you don't want to be too bold Oh, look, all of that coding just for it to come out. Look at this little ugly thing. Wait, let's do P2. Add some padding. Padding's important. What happened to the height 64? Like, dude, height 64 is supposed to make it be large. So there's something weird going on. Let's add a div around it with some margin top and width full. Maybe that'll help. Still the category, I was expecting it to be larger. I'm a little bit confused. Height 80, let's try it. But it's just like not affecting it at all. Interesting. Ooh, I also just noticed on mobile, we don't have any mobile responsiveness right now. That's not good. So let's take care of that. So on mobile, we need to change this grid. We need to add a breakpoint, like medium grid calls for, that should work. So if we reload now on mobile, these would look correct. And if we stretch the phone at a certain point, it should switch back. Oh, which it's not. It's not, what the heck? What the heck? Oh, you know what? You know why the styling is not updating guys? because we're still using Rails S from the pry. I'm sorry, that's what's really annoying about it. So you need to use bin slash dev when you're coding with Tailwind or else the new styling doesn't get like added. So I'm sorry if you guys were getting pissed off too. Also, that that's what would have caused our category button not to like get the styling, at least I think, but now it's still not showing. <laughs> Even with the refresh. Okay, shop by category. We'll come over here. I also want to add the breakpoint on the categories page. So let's go to categories index and we're going to add the medium breakpoint right there. So now on mobile, it's a little bit more readable. Looks good. Back to categories. And then also these buttons at the bottom are only for admin guys. So we might want to like add some more links for a normal user. And to test that out, we could either sign out of the admin account, which right now there's not an option for that, or we could just go to local, we could go to incognito and like navigate around and see how we want to change things. Like, first of all, if there's a category, I feel like we should add another breadcrumb here where it's like allows you to go to the category. And that's a pretty easy one to add. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the product show page and right up here where we have all the rest of the breadcrumbs, We'll just add another link to, but we'll say only if at product.category. And then this would be like another one of these. And instead of product.name, it would be product.category.name. And then we'll pass in product.category. That should sort itself out. If I reload, uh, we didn't set a category on this iPhone, but if we go to the t-shirt, you'll see that there's an extra breadcrumb for t-shirts and allows you to go to the categories. That's awesome. That's a good feeling. Now, by the way, let's go change, let's go set the category on this iPhone. So I'm gonna have to do that in admin. 
So if I come as an admin, we get these little nice buttons at the bottom. I can click edit and I can set the category to tech accessories, update, and just like that. Now we get this extra breadcrumb, which allows us to go to tech accessories. And honestly, this looks really good. Uh, I think for navigation too, once we add the nav bar at the top, it'll make like navigating back to the home page very easy. So I'm honestly pretty happy with this right now. This button is like, <laughs> this is just such a random button shot by category. That's why I wanted to make it like large, but let's worry about that later. I feel like this is, this was pretty good for a part two of the series. And I feel like I'm going to take a little break, but then I'll come back and I'll set up the nav bar, stripe and the checkout. But this was an awesome video. Hope you guys enjoyed. You learned how to build categories for your e-commerce app, hook them into the products. And also what else did we do? We fumbled around with the select field in the form, learned how that worked a little bit better. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please press the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys again soon. I'm going to be posting a lot of content. I'm very motivated right now. And I love everything that you guys have been commenting down below too. Let me know if there's anything you want to see me build. I would love to be challenged. I love building like crazy solutions to real world problems. Currently, I'm building a nonprofit to help musicians. So there's just like a lot of stuff I'm doing, but... YouTube is definitely a huge priority because I want to help people learn to code and just share my knowledge with the world, really. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you around.